Hi folks, it's Stretman here from Putwear.com. Um, just carrying on with the strategy. Now, the strategy is quite profitable. Over the last week, um, the guys in the, the Skype trading room know that um, since I started trading again at the beginning of this month, I've easily done uh, around 500 pips. Um, and that's just using the basic bits of the strategy. Now, um, due to my unique situation or personal situation, which I've discussed in the Skype trading room, um, even though I'm very successful in the number of pips I can make, I don't have a very large trading account, unfortunately. So I do rely on um, getting some extra work. So if you do have some programming work you'd like me to do, um, think about that. Uh, that's paid programming work. Also, if you do benefit quite significantly from what I'm teaching you here, please consider making a donation to um, my efforts. The dashboard that I sell, um, I've worked out that it, it really hasn't even covered about 25% of the time that I've spent creating that. And uh, there's a lot of time that I spend doing these videos and things as well. So if you do want to make a donation, go to my website, pipware.com, top right hand side, there's uh, a link there to donate. And it's just a simple case of um, you know, just going to PayPal and deciding how much you'd like to donate. Anyway, enough of that. Let's uh, get into this next part. This, this next part is all about support and resistance. Um, and the way candles kind of form and, and reading those. So everything to do with the candles, price action. So the types of support and resistance we've got to be mindful of. Let's just run over a few of them. One would be um, looking at points where price was once support turning into resistance or vice versa. So a, an example of that on this chart, which is probably not the best example, but uh, is, is an idea, is that price has come down, bounced off this point, finally broken through and then come back and retested it. So that would be considered support becoming resistance. So resistance coming up from the bottom, support falling down from the top. Another point of support and resistance would be looking at previous highs and lows on your chart. This could be on your H1, H4, daily, anywhere. So here's, here's the high, previous high on the H1. Now price has come up and hit that previous high but not broken through it. Now, so that's considered another area of support and resistance. Another way of doing it would be to draw trend lines. So if I draw a trend line here uh, on the tops of these, there's the trend going downwards. Prices come up and kind of come through here, but it hasn't closed above that line. So right now I'm considering that, that maybe this is a valid resistance line. Price coming up, hitting it, bouncing off. That's another way. But, but there's a, a more subtle way that uh, people use quite effectively. And again, it might be just one of those self-fulfilling prophecy kind of things. Um, who knows? But it, it seems to work. Um, and that is looking at the previous day's high and low, uh, creating a pivot point based on those, and then also looking at the previous weeks, uh, the previous week, the high and low, creating a pivot point on that, and then uh, maybe even the monthly. But it all comes down to what you choose as, as your start of the week or start of a day. Now, as you know from previous videos, I consider the start of a trading day the end of New York, which is New York 5 p.m. The reason for that is that the week for trading tends to start there as well. So Sunday afternoon, 5 p.m. New York is the start of the week. Now, I'm going to just mark this um, hourly chart with some vertical lines just to show where the 5 p.m. New York uh, points are. Ah, so um, just do that now. And there we go. So um, the yellow line is representing 5 p.m. on Sunday, whereas uh, the white lines are representing 5 p.m. on the other days, uh, 5 p.m. New York. This is the 5 p.m. Friday, so the end of the trading week, and this is the start of the trading week. So what one would typically do in this instance would be to look at the high and low of a day and project it through to the next day. So in this case, this would be the high of, of this day, this one in here, and uh, we'll draw the low and project it through. 
Now, in this particular instance that I'm showing you here, um, price didn't come back up and test this point. It's not really too much of an issue. Um, it's just that this is quite often a place where support and resistance might occur. Um, clearly this candle kind of stops short of this point, so that could be classified as a support point. Um, if we take the high for, to, for yesterday and the low for yesterday, we can look through here. Now if we, if we zoom down onto lower time frames, like we'll just have a look at the M5, what we'll find is that um, this was the uh, daily low from yesterday. It broke through, um, but then kind of in a sense bounced from that point. Some would say this is a bounce, some would say well I'm dreaming. Um, it's up to you, but um, that's what we do with support and resistance. We're, we're looking at all the common places that price tends to react. So um, same thing can be done for the weekly. So if I, if I zoom out here and I look at the previous week and I grab the high, so this, this is the previous week between these two yellow points and I look at the low of the previous week. Okay. Uh, those there can be used as support and resistance during the next week. Now the bit where it becomes really quite useful is when you start looking at uh, the what we call a pivot. Now a pivot is where you take the high and low of a, a time period, so in this case I'm going to do it for the week. So here's the high, there's the low, kind of the low occurred there, and the close of the week was somewhere in here. Now if I add those one, two, three values together and divide them by three, I end up with another line through the center. So I'm going to go and add that um, so that the line that occurs here, I'm going to project it through into the next week. So we'll just do that. So in this case, I've drawn up a number of weeks in my vertical lines. And, I'm, and what I've done is taken the high and low from the previous week and put it into the current week. And so if we move back in time a little bit, what we can see is that the this line here, which was the previous high of the week before, was definitely well respected in the, the next week. Um, and I've added the dash line, which is the pivot point created from the high line close. And you can see that the low from the week before was a very good support and resistance line. If you can't see that, um, go and get some glasses. Okay, this, this here is the pivot point created from the previous week's data. And we can see again that that was a very good point of support and resistance. And if you go back in time, you will see this so often. Here we go, the weekly pivot again. Um, go back into the week before. Um, like you just see it all the time. Here's the pivot point. Price came up, touched it, broke through, came back, retraced back to it. Um, price came down to the weekly low of the previous. So that was the low of the previous week um, being drawn here, and it came down to it. We can do exactly the same thing with the daily uh, things as well. I'll leave the weekly ones on, and I'll draw some daily ones in for you. So I spent a bit of time calculating these up. So you can see that. Um, this is the low from the previous day. That's the high from the previous day. This is the pivot point from the previous day calculated. Sorry, calculated from the previous day's data. Now, if I go back in time and I zoom into a lower time frame, um, let's have a look at how price has reacted to those points. So, here we go. Pivot point bounce. We've got a pullback to the bottom of the previous day. Here's the uh, weekly pivot. Here's the uh, daily pivot calculated from previous day's data. You can see that that's been respected. Uh, break through the pivot, but that was news. Uh, the previous day high, that was used quite significantly. Previous day high here was used as a um, resistance point. Uh, pivot point here, price definitely was bouncing off this and being used, and then the previous day's high, maybe some news around this area that caused that to be uh, junked up a bit. But um, look, here's the pivot point again. Um, clearly price has, has been respecting this. This was the previous week's uh, low as well, previous day high. So when we talk about support and resistance, we need to be considering 
things like this and uh, very important. Okay, we'll move on to the next video.